All right, National College Football Roundup. Let's recap some of the biggest games from week one. Number 11, Oregon, against number three, Georgia. And oh, my God. Uh, That was a thorough ass kicking. Uh, We were wrong about this one, man. This game was not not close. We, We thought Oregon would be able to battle at the line of scrimmage with Georgia. Ted, we were very, 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 very wrong. Whoa. Yeah. 49 um, to three. That, and it could have been way was, worse. Georgia yeah. called the dogs off in the fourth. That is not what I expected going in. Um, yeah, Oregon outmatched, outclassed. Uh, Stetson Bennett was excellent. The The offense for Georgia was was – Probably for me was the most surprising part of that, uh, putting up those type of numbers, smooth, efficient. Yeah, Oregon, that's that is a humbling experience to go uh Dan Lanning back to Atlanta with the number eleven Oregon team and face that. That was brutal. Yeah, and got the bad Bo Nix. Uh was not very effective in the passing game through a atrocious interception um Oregon didn't do much in the running game either uh, it's just George's defense lost all those guys so he said okay you know something's got to give right all those first rounders no uh, they looked the George's defense looked like a freak show again and and then George's offense they they could just do whatever they wanted to Oregon's defense yep. I mean, you mentioned it Stetson Bennett looked good they ran it well with Kendall Milton and Kenny McIntosh. McIntosh was just a monster catching the ball out of the backfield. I mean, they just destroyed Georgia. Lad McConkey looks like about the fastest little white wide receiver I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I mean, Georgia, they, they look like the best team in the country. I mean, they were dominant at the line of scrimmage, just all kinds of speed at the skill position. Stetson Bennett, like, I and I, I watched a little bit of Bama against Utah State. I mean, not not going to learn much from that one, but for Georgia to come out with all the change that they've had and to smack Oregon like this, I mean, I think they should be number one. This was this was an ass kicking of epic proportions. I mean, it, if you didn't watch it, like you see the score, it wasn't even close. Like the score would have been way worse if, if Kirby smart didn't like Dan Lanning. So much for the championship hangover, right? Oh my that gosh. Was, uh, yeah. They came out on fire, ready to go. And I'm with you that they should, uh, definitely be number two. If they're not number one, um, how about Stetson Bennett, man, coming out and playing the way he did against Oregon? You know, he's got a million reasons to question himself and 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 maybe lack confidence, but he keeps plugging through and proving the the naysayers wrong. He was excellent. They're yeah, gonna be I, I keep forgetting. Uh, I keep forgetting. Like he's got some wheels too. Yeah. Like he can do some stuff with his feet. So man, just a about as dominant of a performance as you'll see in, in a week one marquee game. My goodness, Georgia. Georgia's going to be a problem. All right. Number seven, Utah went to the swamp and lost to the Florida Gators. Florida wins 29 26. Ted, you tried to talk me into Utah. We did TV together on Friday. I reconvinced myself and picked Florida to win. I feel like a genius. It was a good pick. It was what a football game though, man. That was that was probably the most physical game that I saw all day. Uh it was I mean, Utah and Florida were just punishing each other and came down to the very end. And a poor decision, frankly, by Cam Rising, who had played really good the entire night, uh, didn't need to make that throw at that time. Uh, no, no reason to risk that with where they sat in the football game and what was going down, uh, but an awesome play there by Florida defensively to get the interception to win it. I think both of those teams are going to be really good. Uh, here's the interesting thing. 
Utah lost to Florida, but that that loss doesn't eliminate them from the playoff. No. I Oregon completely lost agree. to Georgia, and that loss totally eliminates them from the playoff. Yes. Um, you cannot, there's no way you're there, going to be able to justify anything after that. There's right? no coming back from that ass whooping. There's no coming no. back. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunate for landing in Oregon, but this, the, the Utah Florida game, like the second half of that game was awesome. And Anthony Richardson is electric. Yeah. I mean, how fun is that guy to watch? And it just an absurd athlete at that size i mean and everyone's talking about the rushing touchdowns he had three of them like the way that he was able to sling it the, what the pump fakes whirly bird thing he did on the two-point conversion <laughs> never seen that that was i mean that was incredible but I, I mean the first drive of the game like florida's going right down the field they fumble and it looks like utah's db is going to scoop and score and anthony richardson just runs him down and knocks it like 15 yards out of bounds. I was just like, oh my God. I mean, he Ted, I I don't even know how you defend a guy like that. Like he's I mean, if he throws the ball accurately, I I don't know what you do. He's he is a freak show. You don't do anything, really. You just pray. Uh, you know, you pray that you can make some plays on in the passing game and contain him enough where his legs don't absolutely kill you but you know quarterbacks that are that are that explosive and that athletic and talented that can do both that can beat you with the run in the pass you just hold on for dear life <laughs> that's about all you could do yeah and florida's running game looked good too i mean i yeah. really liked how those zone schemes looked uh some of the boot stuff they built off of it getting richardson out on the edges i, I thought I thought Billy Napier's game plan was smart, right? That he he ran it at the edges of Utah's defense, didn't try, you know, to run it. A lot of inside zone stuff stretched him, made him play in space. I I still can't believe Cam Rising made that throw, though. I mean, he he no. played so well up to that point, not only as a passer, but using his legs. But I I have no idea what he was looking at. The guy was double covered. Uh, it just, at the very least, three. at the very least, that game should have gone to overtime. It, I bet you if they hand it to Tavion Thomas, and I know the timeout situation was what it was, but man, Florida's defense was not stopping that running game from Utah. They probably could have handed it to Thomas at there, and he probably would have scored, and they would have won. Yeah. But just can't make that mistake. Nope, nope. And it was uncharacteristic because he's, he's money. He's a really good quarterback. That was just a... Uh... You know, the moment, trying to force something in there, trying to win it, and you just didn't have to do it at that time. Frustrating for them, but like I said, I, you know, I don't think that eliminates them from anything. Uh, all that does is kind of announce to the rest of the, the world and the SEC that Florida is going to be dangerous this year. Yeah, Anthony Richardson's ridiculous. I mean, he is – he's going to be – he's – I mean, and there's an argument. We'll see how the season unfolds, but he is going to be must see TV. Yep. Like uh, he is. I mean, it's like if Cam Newton and Vince Young had a baby. It's just it's fun to watch, man. And I, I I'm with you on Utah. I think that they can still play their way back into this thing. But I, I will say they got a couple tight ends that are really fun to watch. Like there's a lot yeah. to like about Utah, but ultimately just an absolutely massive win for Billy Napier in his opener. I mean, just huge. Yeah, that was, yeah, that, that for an opener, like your first win, that is, that's big time. That's big time to knock off a, a number seven Utah. And I, I, that is a legit number seven. Like I think Utah is that good. I got no problem with them being ranked where they are. So, to get that win, that is a legitimate big time win for Florida and something that they're going to be able to really build on there with that program. And you know, he's he's a he's the type of coach that takes something like this in the proper direction. You know, I, I think that 
think Florida is going to be – they're in good hands right now with Napier. Yeah, and uh, there, were, there were some people questioning kind of the clock management at the end of that game. But, hey, it all ended up working out for them. So, it's a huge win for Florida. I'm sure that they will catapult in the rankings after, after Anthony Richardson – uh, and that show he put on. So we'll, we'll see, but I will, I will not be shocked if they're like 15th uh, this week yeah. in the AP poll. Okay. The, uh, it was the headliner of week one, number five, Notre Dame went to number two, Ohio state and the Buckeyes get a 21 to 10 win. Uh, now good teams win, but great teams cover Ted. Look at the Irish <laughs> go, but I watched, I, I, I went back and watched this entire game Sunday morning. It almost it almost felt like an NFL game. I yeah. mean, a lot of talent on the field, lots of punts, field position mattered a lot, like some momentum swing. Like it felt very national football leaguey to me. But it, the funny part about it is people people seem to complain a lot about the fact that when you know these big time games happen. And usually it's in the college football playoff in the semifinals. Like they complain about the big blowouts. Like we want more competitive games between the top teams. Like why can't we get more competitive games? And then we actually get one and people are like, what the hell's wrong with Ohio state's offense? Like what's their problem? And, and Jackson Smith and Jigba being banged up early in that game certainly didn't help, but it was just a competitive physical football game. Like, And I know, it's weird for people to watch that, but that's what it was. I thought it was fantastic. I, I bet I, I you thought, loved it. Yeah, I thought Notre Dame played really well, forcing that game to kind of stay in their wheelhouse. Uh, you know, kept kept Ohio State from turning it into a uh, you know up and down the the field type of game. I I was. Even though they didn't put up many points, I still thought Notre Dame's offense, um, you know, that was the biggest question mark for me. And I saw some flashes there that they have a chance to be pretty decent. But, you know, the the real win here goes to Ohio State's defense, right? You know, that they were not good a year ago. And Ryan Day makes the makes the move, gets rid of the defensive coordinator, hires Knowles, who comes in. and they in first game out playing a top five Notre Dame team to hold them to 10 points. Uh, really, really impressive stuff. I thought, I thought Ohio state's defense looked really good. And, you know, I guess I feel different than most people. I, I feel like this winning this game in the fashion that they did makes Ohio state a more dangerous team than I thought they were previously. I completely agree with that. Like they won ugly. They they won a physical game, right? It, it wasn't all just like space and speed. Like they dominated the fourth quarter of this game. I I mean they ran it all over Notre Dame in the fourth quarter. And man, what was it like ninety five yards, seven plus minutes off the clock? Like that is impressive stuff against a team like Notre Dame. And that that running back combo of Henderson and Williams. Whew. I mean, that's tough stuff, man. But CJ Stroud, he was, he was pretty efficient in the game, missed some throws. I, I did think he made some really nice throws on the move when he was kind of had to flee the pocket, ha had some really nice throws mentioned Smith and Jigba being banged up to clearly, you know, you lose arguably the best wide receiver in college football. And he, he just, you know, that, that takes away from your offense, but I will say Emeka Buka, that guy's good. He's going to be, he's going to be their next star at wide receiver. Yep. And I, I just, I thought Ohio state won a style of game that it feels like they've struggled with recently. Right, kind of a defensive, physical, who can run it better, who can control field possession type game. Like, I feel like that's a game they've struggled with. And ultimately, they played an opener against the top five football team. They dominated the fourth quarter where they ran the hell out of the football and they won. And a lot of people are going to be like, what's wrong with the offense? It's just, it's silly, man. Yeah. I, I, um, 
you know, like the opening week, really like the opening three weeks of college football is tough because uh, if you're an Ohio State fan, you see teams like, that are your main competition, like like a Georgia or an Alabama, go out and score all kinds of points against their opponents. And I know uh, Utah State is not what Oregon is, but I, there's such a discrepancy between the competition. I Don't worry about that. Worry about the game you're watching. And you're watching two really good teams. And the fact that you can get it done in in a way that you couldn't have got it done a year ago with your defense should be happy about that. Yeah. 